So racks, steering racks are a pretty hot topic in the category at the moment. I thought it was a great opportunity since we had a bit of drama with them at Sydney Motorsport Park to give you a little bit of history and go back and have a look at them. So this is what a standard one looks like all built up and put together. And I'm gonna take you through a disassembled one in a minute and show you some of the, the issues and why. But first I thought I'd explain to you a little bit about how we got to this and how it's an issue. So when um, AAA designed this car, they decided to make it a front steer car, which means that this steering rack goes the front of the cross member and it steers from the front of the wheels. Now, what happened last year and a lot of years previous to that, every car, almost every car in the category has been rear steer. So that means this steering rack goes behind the cross member and steers the back of the wheels. So being a front steer uh, car means you can't use the same rack. The gearing's wrong, it's actually the opposite. So for it to steer at the back of the wheels as opposed to the front, you, when you think about it, the pinion needs to go in the opposite direction. So the rack that we had last year wasn't suitable. Then there was a lot of chat about using electronic rack. You know, it seems like it's the way of the future, but when we went and spoke to ZF, who was one of the suppliers, they couldn't make the rack in the numbers that we required in the timeline that we were looking for. So we had to find someone who had a rack that we could use. So we went back to hydraulic, which is what this is, and we went to Sport Tech. And so Sport Tech have modified a standard road rack, which isn't new to our category. From the VE, previous to the VE, a lot of these racks were standard Holden racks modified for racing purposes. And then of course, as they fail and, and uh, you want a better system, you build something that's hybrid and you build a proper racing one. So that sort of got us to where we are with these. One of the big problems with this, probably because it's an off a road car, is the pinion. Now this is what a pinion looks like. You can see that here. So it's got the gear at the bottom. So it has a, a seal and a bearing and a circlip, which all go on here. I don't know if you can see it. So they get pressed on there and then this gets pressed into this housing. And as you turn that, it moves the wheels backwards and forwards. So one of the real issues, I guess, is the, the seal. With the pressure that it gets under and the, the, the amount we need to steer these cars, we're blowing these seals out. So that's a real issue. And that was one of the problems we had with Andre's car. With Andre's car, we had another seal issue, which I don't think anyone else has, but this little seal here presses in uh, and, and the rack bar goes through it and that was damaged. So they were the two separate things that happened to us at Sydney Motorsport Park prior to and during race one. So once we put all new seals, we pull it all apart. All these components on the car are lifed. We do that with every part of the car and then we'll put it all back together. So Paul will pull, he's pulled it all apart. He'll clean it, he'll check everything. You can see how clean everything is and then he'll put it back together and it'll look like this when it's finished and we'll put it in the car and hopefully we won't have any trouble with it.